The intent of this video is to compare the effectiveness of World War II German and Japanese aircraft armor with U.S. armor. All main World War II belligerents armored their aircraft to protect the pilots, bomber crews, and sometimes the plane's vital systems. Aircraft armor usually consists of a Martin sight, plate steel, and bearing gauges. Keep in mind as we go through the data that bullets will likely be slowed down prior to reaching the armor as they pass through the plane's airframe structure and systems, and they may strike the armor at offset angles. Either of these effects will tend to reduce the bullet's penetrating power. Aircraft armor plate can be fabricated as homogeneous or face hardened. Homogeneous armor implies the armor material properties are uniform throughout its cross section. Homogeneous armor functions by absorbing the projectile's kinetic energy through plastic deformation. As discussed in this 1946 unclassified report, a study of ballistic and metallurgical characteristics of steel aircraft armor. This ink canal coupon was shot with a 9mm pistol bullet. The coupon was fabricated from an 063 inch thick nickel chromium iron based alloy or an inconel. The inconel coupon shows plastic strain or deformation without bullet penetration failure. This specimen shows good energy absorption in the plastic range or material toughness. Face hardened armor on the other hand is designed to break or deform the projectile. Face hardened armor will have its outer bullet exposed surface hardened. The plate's ductile plastic flow is of secondary consideration. All of the documents shown in this presentation are unclassified. This chart represents the rolled homogeneous armor plate penetration gauge based on firing range, strike angle, and barrel length for a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet. The chart is extracted from a 1945 Volume 3 Terminal Ballistics Data Document. Usage of the chart was discussed in the channel's video, 50 caliber armor piercing bullet ballistics. This chart is based on identical parameters, but the armor plate has been face hardened. The armor penetration gauge versus range has been replotted for bullet strikes perpendicular to the plate surface. The x-axis is the range of the armor plate to the gun's muzzle and yards from 0 to 1800. The y-axis is the gauge of the armor at penetration in inches. The curves in the body of the chart represent armor plates fabricated from homogeneous steel or face hardened steel. A homogeneous armor plate will need to be around 35% thicker to match the penetration ballistic performance of a face hardened armored plate. At war's end, both U.S. fighters and bombers operating in the European theater replaced their 50 caliber ammo belt tracer, incendiary, and armor piercing rounds with 100% ammo mix, armor piercing, incendiary cartridges as shown in this 1945 chart. An armor piercing incendiary's projectile penetrating power is roughly 15% less than a standard armor piercing bullet. This chart shows the U.S. Navy's F-6F Hellcat fighter with a mixture of homogeneous armor and face hardened armor. This image lists the location of the P-47 Thunderbolt's face hardened armor plates. Tests were conducted to evaluate Japanese armor performance. The Japanese fighters lacked armor in the early war years in preference for high maneuverability as discussed in this 1947 U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey report titled Japanese Air War and Tactics. As pilot quality deteriorated and losses were high in 1943, armor was added to the new generation of Japanese Imperial Army and Navy fighters. The reduction in pilot losses can be inferred from this Japanese pilot experience chart as extracted from the 1947 U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey Report, the 5th Air Force in the War Against Japan. The year of 1943 is shaded in this image. Bullet penetration tests of Japanese armor indicated it was roughly equivalent to U.S. armor quality, as discussed in the shaded section of this chart. The Japanese incorporated the higher penetration resistant face hardened armor in gauges greater than 7 millimeters. 7 millimeters equates to 0.28 inches. Japanese fighter armor weighed between 88 and 110 pounds and the plates were generally limited to protection of the pilot's back and head. Surprisingly, aircraft armor was designed to be detachable and could be removed at the pilot's discretion. Let's take a look at a couple Japanese fighter armor configurations. The U.S. adopted code names for Japanese fighters. The code names are shown in this image from a June 1945, 296 page manual, Japanese Aircraft Performance and Characteristics. 
The Key 43 Oscar fighter pilot's head and back were protected by 12 millimeters face hardened steel, as shown in this image and in this image. Armor panels of 12 millimeters in gauge would be considered thick fighter armor. The U.S. conducted bullet penetration tests on a captured Oscar. A 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary bullet was fired at the Oscar's armor, striking the armor at a velocity of 2,322 feet per second at an angle normal to the face hardened surface. The projectile partially penetrated and cracked the armor. The results of this test are consistent with the U.S. armor plate penetration thickness for a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet chart shown earlier when modifying for the reduced penetration expected from an armor piercing incendiary bullet. A 50 caliber bullet speed will have slowed down to 2,322 feet per second when fired from a range of around 400 yards. A U.S. face hardened armor plate will need to be 0.6 inches or thicker to stop an armor piercing projectile at this range. An armor piercing incendiary bullet has around 15% less penetrating power as an armor piercing bullet. A 15% gauge reduction factor implies the API bullet penetration occurring at a face hardened armor thickness of 0.51 inches. The Franks fighter armor provides the same level of protection as the Oscars, as shown in this image. The Frank also incorporated a 65mm bulletproof windscreen, as shown in this image. Although not tested, we would expect the Frank's armor performance to be equivalent to the Oscars, or the same as U.S. face hardened quality. The Jack fighter was designed with just a single, thin, 8mm armor plate behind the pilot's head, as shown in this image. No back protection is provided. The Baca rocket-powered suicide bomber's armor is shown in this image. The pilot is protected by 5 16 armor plates behind and below his station. Note that the warhead and rocket motors are assumed to provide some level of projectile protection. For reference, the U.S. Navy conducted tests to evaluate the performance of Japanese ship armor as shown in this 1947 target report titled Ballistic Tests and Metallurgical Examination of Japanese Heavy Armor. Thick Japanese ship armor was found to be inferior to U.S. armor of equivalent thickness. Japanese ship armor was found to have superior tensile strength but low ductility as discussed in this 1946 Japanese heavy armor report. The U.S. and British conducted tests to determine the quality of German aircraft armor. German aircraft armor examined showed good resistance to penetration but low resistance to shock, as discussed in this 1944 report, Metallurgical Examination of German Aircraft Armor from the Heinkel 111 and the Junkers 87 planes. Various mechanical and physical tests were conducted on the scavenged German aircraft armor plates. The armor plates tested were homogeneous at a thickness of 5 sixteenths of an inch or 8 millimeters. The report indicates that the Germans tended to fabricate steel armor with more strategically available alloying elements such as manganese and silicon for less available nickel and molybdenum. The ballistics test indicates that the German armor had equivalent or superior penetration performance as compared to the U.S. produced armor plate. This chart shows the locations of the armor panels of the FW-190 German fighter from a 1944 aircraft handbook. The pilot's head is well protected with a whopping 20 millimeters of armor. 20 millimeters equates to 0.79 inches. A face hardened armor panel of this gauge should be able to stop a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet fired from 220 yards. In summary, ballistic testing indicated that both Japanese and German aircraft armor matched U.S. armor. Did any of the data shown surprise you? If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.